Hi, my name is Steve Brozak, and I'm the president of WBB Securities. I'm uh, going to present a discussion of the capital markets in the time of COVID, but before I do, I would like to thank Tax Associates specifically for their sponsorship and leadership in the digital novel Coronavirus Investment Forum. They've been leaders in the field of science and obviously with the coronavirus currently and everything that's affecting throughout the globe, their sponsorship, their leadership is critically important in these times. And again, thank you. Going into what is the coronavirus, what is COVID-19, we at WBB have come up with a visual that starts to explain the considerations we must take into account for the capital markets. And the way we've looked at it is to draw from a paraphrase of Dickens, a tale of two realms. In this particular case, it's the capital markets versus the economic realities that we face. On the positive, we see almost $5 trillion invested in money market funds that to quote some Wall Street uh, analysts, uh, is the powder that is ready to be spent on these markets. We also see another accelerant in the form of interest rates at historic lows. What this has prompted is an equity issuance at peak levels that has pretty much never been seen before and certainly not in these times of turmoil. On the other side, what we're looking at are US government debt issuances at all time highs and not just in terms of uh, percentage, but historic all-time highs. Also, we're seeing unemployment rates that are difficult to quantify and are quite challenging to everyone that cares about what happens, not just on Wall Street, as they say, but on Main Street. What we're also looking at, and what a lot of um, different uh, economists are thinking about is, what will happen next as we can think about expected bankruptcies and foreclosures throughout multiple industries and multiple economic sectors? These are all the considerations that we should look at and I'd like to discuss. To start with, the money supply. In addition to money markets at all-time highs, we're also looking at money supply that the Federal Reserve has increased to the point of north of $5 trillion going back to May. That's a, almost a half a billion dollar, half a trillion dollar increase over the same period of time and looks to be increased even more into June and July. These are considerations that never usually come into play, but now we have to consider them very carefully for what will happen next. Combined with the interest rates that we had talked about in terms of being at historic lows, we're now looking at a model that we actually do have negative interest rates with a few exceptions. These exceptions are certain consumer staples and goods. The end result of this will be challenging and candidly has never been done in an economy this size or for any sustained period of time. Following up, we have two separate paths as well. On the equity issuance side, as you can see, equity issuance rates are, again, at all time highs. The Wall Street community and the investors out there have seen fit to go out and accept these new issuances. But again, they've been selective because on the corollary to that, you're seeing US loan issuance rates plummet. And that's a big consideration for the capital that will be needed to continue the growth after we start to see some kind of settlement in what will take place with COVID. The other disconcerting issue that we must think about are U.S. debt securities. There has never been a rate of issuance. There has never been a rate of debt level. There has never been anything remotely close to this and the specifics that we have to think about are what are the challenges to the US dollar as a fiat currency? In following up on this, I'll return to it at the end, but I'd like you to consider that these debt levels, while currently a fact of life, 
cannot be continued for more than a certain period of time. This shows you why the certain period of time is of concern. Coming from Johns Hopkins, this was pulled a few days ago and shows the extreme growth in COVID across the world. Obviously in the United States, we're facing our own challenges and we are seeing some controls taking place in Europe, Japan, China. Unfortunately, we don't share that same degree of control and it's a consideration for what will happen into the future for these capital markets. Hospital costs have risen is another major concern. As you can see on this slide, the Centers for Disease Control have estimated that the Medicare age individuals, the most vulnerable population specifically, has increased significantly. What this means is essentially that the highest cost population is now going to be taxing the system more than ever before. The Kaiser Family Foundation made estimates earlier in the quarter running numbers that said that patients requiring treatment for COVID ran more than 20,000 and close to 90,000 for patients that required ventilator support. While this number may seem high, we here at WBB feel that the number is probably even higher. And when you consider that between new treatments and how long ventilator support is required for some of these patients, the number can easily double and that has to be a concern, especially when you consider that what we are now looking at is a possibility for, in the United States alone, over 40 million people not having regular health care insurance coverage. What that has prompted is, on the last calculation, bad debt and charity cases for hospital systems have gone up just by 13% March over March. We don't have the new numbers. But without doing too much research, we can only assume that this number will increase and increase significantly. Another consideration that we have to think about is that drug supplies, specifically those critical drug supplies, are now being taxed, which the supply chain across the world seeing disruptions. Another consideration again, and not to belabor these points, but hospital systems have incurred costs to expand treatment for ICU beds and other short-term treatment beds that are not going to be reimbursed in the normal way. The consequence, it's estimated by the American Hospital Association that the loss for US hospitals and healthcare systems for this year will be $323 billion, almost a third of a trillion dollars. Here's a part that we need to think about as well. Normally, in this type of environment, you would see healthcare professionals also increasing in terms of employment, but we've not seen that. It's, a, again, a tale of two types of employment. We see jobs having declined in the beginning of 2020, but healthcare jobs as well. And this is a part that is a bit disquieting because if you were to consider the fact that these people are critical in our recovery, the fact that they have been let go and there is a question as to when they may be rehired, poses an issue that no one really has talked about. Of course, we have examples of what can happen in the positive between therapeutics, vaccines, non-drug therapies, and diagnostics. But again, that's not the specific topic for this discussion. It is a significant consideration, but again, we'll have to wait and see what technologies what therapeutics do emerge. Turning to danger points in our system, simple checks have come back with areas of concern. Looking at Olympus America, 96% of their job listings were removed as of a few days ago. This provides us some kind of visibility into a critical diagnostic area that may or may not rebound at this time when Candidly, we will need the use of diagnostics more than ever to go out there and deal with patients that are getting sicker as they refrain from normal, everyday healthcare requirements. One of the areas that the US has also focused on 
has been the pharmaceutical vaccine and medical device manufacturing challenges that are here in the United States. It is a matter of public record that the U.S. has focused on bringing back these specific industries. However, there isn't really a coherent plan that can be monitored to say how and when they will do this. And the other part of it is that just like COVID, we have to understand that this is specifically a global challenge and not a separate challenge. And unless we have a global plan for manufacturing, we will remain challenged in ways that we really shouldn't be. As far as the follow-up to that, there is limited, if any, coherent nationwide plan here in the United States for meeting the COVID challenge. And this obviously is something that the capital markets will have to focus on. In addition, our middle class in the U United States, which has been the pride of its growth throughout this century, is also bearing focus in a negative way. We are seeing disruption that we have never seen before. And before we can judge what the capital markets will do next, we need to consider this. During these unprecedented times, we're also seeing something that candidly does make a great deal of concern for anyone that looks at how the global response will, in, in effect, eventually unfold. With the U.S. distancing itself from the World Health Organization, NATO, and its European allies, we are now facing an area where any kind of control, any kind of planning is becoming more difficult. With the question of when vaccines will be presented, we now need to think about how they will be made, how will they be distributed, and what kind of an infrastructure will the United States use? Recently, we have seen much mention of the Department of Defense here in the United States distributing vaccine and vaccine systems. However, this is a model that frankly has never been attempted before and certainly not to this level. Long-term dangers. We are looking at some phenomenon that have not been envisioned before, even with a social security system that was considered to be at the margin in years to come. We have definitely detected social security contributions that have declined. As mentioned earlier, Americans, specifically the middle class, are beginning to live paycheck to paycheck. <clears throat> and with savings being marginalized now and retirement withdrawals rising, we are now seeing a situation where we are in question as to what will we be living on into the future when we do see any kind of recovery. And again, this is a question for the capital markets. How will they operate when we start to see that tightening of money supply, when we start to see raises in interest rates? Weimar Republic comparisons, as this is a global conference, are easy. However, they're not straightforward. Although, with no small irony, we are talking about the 1918-1919 pandemic, taking place, we're also talking about the chaos that ensued within Germany. However, other than the fact that we do have issues dealing with far left and far right concerns, we've yet to see the issues around general strikes and hyperinflation. But be concerned that nothing is off the table. Again, comparisons to other times are not easy. These are difficult times. Right now, we are looking at a narrow window to reduce debt load and increase cash, which bodes well for the capital markets and the raising of equity. However, we must very, very carefully consider what the opportunities are for therapeutics and diagnostics and make sure that these are husbanded and not just in an approach to looking at free cash flow, but also in incentivizing new technologies. I wrap up by looking at not a question of if, but when and how bad will things come, and or will they get better and how will they get better? It is critical to understand this November election will be a turning point, but to what becomes the question? We here in the United States have a narrow window to control the virus. The question becomes, has it closed? And if it has, what are the steps that we can take to go out there and deal with it and the new challenges ahead? These will obviously be challenges to our healthcare system, 
But whenever there are challenges like this, we also do see opportunities. But to what again remains the question? I close with Charles Dickens. Obviously, we've all read, or most of us have read, or at least most of us have read the Monarch Notes to Dickens in a comparison of A Tale of Two Cities. But what we're looking at today is a period that is representative of many periods. The question becomes, how will we rise to this challenge? The capital markets obviously at this time in their strength provide us with access to future new drugs discoveries and eventually a return to normalcy. But we must ensure that we take care of these specific needs and that we focus on them correctly. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.